I want to start out by showing you the quilt laid out on its top. So the back, the bat, and the top are laid out in a quilt sandwich here. And you can see that the top and bottom of the quilt, uh, there's about six inches in length difference between the length of the quilt and about two inches of extra back and bat on the sides of the quilt. It's important to lay the quilt out this way because it helps you to see that there is plenty of room for your top on the back and the bat that you have. Now, if you want to stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm glad to give you some tips when this isn't the ideal situation, but this is the ideal situation when you can lay this quilt sandwich out and know that there's plenty of room for your top on that back and bat. That's really important for the way that I'm going to teach you to do this because since quilts are a textile and they stretch and they're not always perfectly square, maybe you're a perfectionist and you've squared all your blocks and you've squared your quilt, squared your quilt and if you have, that is super awesome. But still, this allows you for some variation to be confident that you're going to have enough back for your whole quilt top. For myself personally, I never have totally squared my quilts to make certain that they are perfectly square because that doesn't matter very much to me. So what I look more is that it looks straight, that the end product looks straight and professional. But if they were to be a quarter or half an inch out of square, I just really wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter to me across the whole quilt. So the first step in putting a quilt on your quilt frame is to find the middle of each of these pieces, the top, the back, and the bat. And I do this just by folding and marking with a pin. You can also do, do it by measuring, but since I've got it all laid out here, to me it's just as easy to fold it and then um, mark it with a pin. The next step is to bring the back over to the quilt frame and line up the center of the back with the center of the middle quilt frame pole. And it will have a mark there. You just line your pin up and then start pinning your back from the center out to both sides along that pole along the bottom of the canvas. I usually have about two or three inches of canvas lined up with the bottom of my quilt. Then you start lining up the front of your quilt with the front pole of your quilt frame. And that happens, and you start with the center working out to both sides again, pinning along the canvas and um, just making sure that it hangs straight. You'll get a second chance to check the straightness of your pinning as you go along. Next, you do the exact same thing with your bat. You align the center that you've marked with the pin with the mark on the canvas. You keep the edge of the bat aligned with the back and pin it along that middle quilt frame roll. You then go ahead and pin the front of the bat to the front roll, aligning it with the back get a chance to check the straightness of this as you begin to roll your quilt. As you start to roll, it's a good chance to compare how straight you pulled, you pinned the fabric with the corners of your quilt roller. And if it's um, a big difference, as it was in my case, I had some, some places that were quite low, then go ahead and adjust those up to make those straight now. Then comes the fun part. It's time to start rolling. Now, remember that our goal is straight and the role of this quilt frame is not to keep the fabric tight, but to keep it straight and taut enough that you can quilt it. So to make that happen, it's the edges, the sides of the quilt that you're especially concerned about aligning. You will see me moving back and forth from side to side of the quilt frame as I'm pulling the quilt to the sides to make sure that the sides of the quilt continue to align. Now the hardest part of this is that the bat tends to roll faster than the back. It grabs onto the back and wants to climb, uh, roll up inside it. And so you will see that as I get to the end of rolling this quilt, I have a lot more 
back left to roll than I do back bat and I will show you a close-up of what this looks like as well. So you can see on the bottom of the quilt frame I have this loop of fabric that did not roll up as tightly as the bat did. So now it's time to unroll a little bit, not all the way, probably halfway at the very most. And you're going to start holding on to that back and pulling it back out of the of the roll where it's rolled up with the back and the batting is tougher than it appears but you do have to be careful not to pull holes in it you're going to want to pull straight forward so that and equally on the side on both halves of the quilt so that you are able to pull some of that bat back out and allow it to roll at the same rate as the backing and that way you'll end up with a nice smooth back and bat together, pulled tight and then locked in the cogs of the quilt frame. Now I roll the quilt back and bat together forward a little bit onto that front roll, uh, loosening it off of the middle roll and rolling it onto the front roll so that it's easier to quilt and easier to reach as I align the top. Next, it's time to put on the top, and the top goes on exactly as the back and bat did, aligning the center with the center of the back pole of the quilt frame, pinning from the center to the sides, and then rolling forward, rolling the quilt top onto the roller, keeping the sides lined up, and that is the most important part. Of course, you realize that unless your quilt is perfect, all of your Quilt lines may not roll perfectly straightly across the quilting roller, but as you keep the sides lined up, you will make sure that there's plenty of room for that quilt top on the back and that. Now it's time to pin the front of the quilt top to the rest of the quilt sandwich at the front edge of the quilt frame. Again, work from the center to the edges, just making sure that you keep everything nice and smooth and then rolling the top back onto that back roller to make it taut enough to quilt. The final step is using the side stretchers. So the side stretchers are another step to keeping it nice and tight while you're quilting it. You can pin those to the edges of your quilt top and then roll them tighter to have the tension that you need as you begin quilting. And now you're all ready to quilt.